it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here with a catch and release video, um, basically talking about what I'm bringing in, what I bought this, this month in books, and then what I'm shipping out because I need to have the room for the new books. <laughs> so uh, basically a haul and an unhaul. Um, what I wanted to do is kind of wait until the end of April because I knew that last weekend was um, was Independent Bookstore Day and was really excited uh, to see what I see what treasures I could come up with. And uh, I think I mentioned that my mother was in town because today's my birthday. And so we were able to do a little bit of shopping and, and, and all that good stuff. So I wanted to to hold off and I, did, and I didn't want to um, do a lot of filming while she was here and spend time with her. So she's back on, on her way home. And um, so it's time to start looking at what all the goodies that I got. So I think she was my lucky charm because I was able to go to some of my favorite bookstores and find some amazing things with her. So let me show you some of the great stuff I got. So I'm a big fan of used bookstores. That is something, uh, trolling a used bookstore, smelling all the old gems there, knowing that there's going to be something in there for me uh, in the backlist makes my heart flutter. So I try to frequently go and, and I have a couple books that I'm always on the lookout for that I think it might actually break my heart when I find them because it's going to, you know, what will I look for after that? But uh, I, I still go every single every single time I can to, to see if I can find them. So uh, I didn't find my my uh, my unicorns this time, but I did find some great treasures. So let me show you what I got. So first up, um, I found this amazing edition literally uh, not even not even opened by this is Ali Smith's winter uh, so I read Ali Smith's autumn thought it was wonderful loved the relationship between the the, the young girl and uh and the uh neighbor thought it was fantastic um I did start this and there was a scene where the woman is having a conversation with a disembodied head that is kind of an imaginary thing in her head and she's having a conversation. And it reminded me so much of, of ja Jonathan Franzen's The Corrections and the scene in the boat on the ship with the father that I just, I, co I, I couldn't, uh, I thought it was pretentious drivel. So I, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to pause that one. But uh, spring is is may even be releasing today, and I really want it. Uh, so, and I love the edition. So, I'm going to give her. I'm going to give this one another chance. Um, and I mean, you can't pass up this edition. It was on. It was ridiculously cheap. So, I had. I had to do it. I had to. Uh, the next uh, gem that I found was this gorgeous uh, Penguin's Cloth edition. I collect these. And this is Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. And this also literally hasn't even been cracked open. The first time I opened it, I could hear, I could hear the spine, the spine give a little bit, which, so that's a delight. Uh, I also found a Folio Society edition of Lard Rise to Candleford. Uh, this is just a really sweet story of um, a village and uh, they're dealing with the impending uh, the impending railroad that's going to be uh, created through their town and how it's going to affect the entire town and so this is if you like stories about a collection of families and and life in rural England or rural world wherever um, and the advent of of technology or society or change on, on the effect that that has on the community. Um, this is the type of book that you might love. Um, as I said, this is very Anglophile uh, type of type of thing. And there was a really sweet uh, mini series. I think PBS had it or a masterpiece maybe um, that I just loved. I thought it was, it was lovely. And this has really, really beautiful uh, woodcuts. So very, very pleased in, in perfect condition. Pleased to have found that. My mother was kind of shocked that I honed in on it that so quickly, the, like within two minutes of walking in. And then I found again the, the, what I love about used bookstores is backlist. So modern. So most of the of the 
bookstores, unless you're a Powell's or something that is, or a Strand, which just gigantic takes over a block, you're just not going to find a lot of back stock. Uh, this is um, the Turner of Silences. The Tuner of Silences is, is uh, Mia Kuto. So uh, Mia Kuto is a Mozambican writer. Uh, I was raised in Maputo, Mozambique um, in the 70s and early 80s uh, when I was young. And so I'm, I, I'm always interested in very thoughtful, uh, smart, uh, own voices coming out of Africa that it that paints the challenges of colonialism and the impacts that it's had on on Africa. And Africa is a gigantic continent, so uh, it's very important to to understand the the, the regional challenges and the regional differences. Uh, what what was experienced in in Portuguese Africa is very different than what was experienced in English Africa, even though the res the the brutality was was uh, very similar, uh, but the effects of colonialism and and the the legacy left um, it has nuances and differences depending on on where where you were in the in the continent. So I'm really looking. I've been looking for this, and this is also a practically a pristine volume. So very excited to add add this to my collection and start reading it very soon. So that was one bookstore that I went to. Another bookstore. Uh, this is a Friends of the Library in Berkeley has phenomenal, Berkeley is just such a literate place. And so there's tons of just amazingly interesting finds at, for, for a steal, like $2. I think, I think the most I paid for one of these is maybe $4. Uh, so I found uh, two Willa Cathers. I read my first Willa Cather, I think last year. Death Comes to the Archbishop, and I loved it. I thought it was much richer than I expected, had so much more detail. I was expecting something in like Nebraska, but it was more of Southwest uh, feel uh, and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful writing, just stunning story. Um, lovely. So I'm looking forward to trying more. And I always love looking for novellas to read for, for readathons. So this one is My Mortal Enemy, excellent condition, lovely. The textured cover, just love it. Uh, this is um, the professor's house, which I've heard good things about. Also, great, great condition, vintage classic. I found this Europa edition, uh, Untouched, of Red Joan. I know this is about to become a movie by with uh, Dame Judi Dench, uh, starring Dame Judi Dench as a as a spy spy thriller. Super excited by that. Uh, and then Doris was just talking about this. Uh, this was uh, The Garden of Evening Mist by Tan Tuan Eng. And she was she was raving about this one. And uh, that cover is just stunning. So uh, took a chance and picked it up. Again, also pristine. Uh, then Aussie April, even though today's, today's the last day, there's no way I'm going to be able to read this today. <clears throat> This is a Tim Witten. I've heard nothing but amazing things about Tim Witten. Uh, so I thought when I saw it, I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to grab it. Uh, I literally know nothing, but man, that is a pro provocative cover. Uh, so really excited to jump into this one. This one's The Turning. Oh, that looks good. And then, um, and then this is a book that my friend Cheryl read. Uh, and she, she, I was, we were reading together. And she finished it and she had tears in her eyes. She was really, really moved. So I was like, okay, I got to figure out what that is. This is a hunky chunkster of a book. Let's see how many pages. Uh, yeah, 781 pages. The Quincux. Quincux. Uh, I've heard nothing but great things. It's a kind of Dickens re reinvented. It's supposed to be phenomenal. Uh, so this was a great, a great copy that, uh, that I grabbed, uh, I think for something like a dollar. Can't beat that. Okay. So that, those were the used bookstores. Um, let's, and then let's talk about some other things. So I have, I finally broke down and got a subscription to Slightly Foxed. I, so I'm not sure if you all have listened to the podcast, but it is 
It is so charming. It is such a balm, especially for anybody who loves uh, English, uh, old Anglophile backlog books, backstock. Uh, the women who run Slightly Fox, it's a publishing company, they put out a quarterly um, a quarterly journal. And then they also publish uh, old books and bring them back to life in these sweet, sweet little editions. And you get this lovely little Slightly Foxed bookmark. Uh, this is Conundrum by Jan Morris. That sounds fantastic. It's uh, historical historical fiction uh, may, mem might even be a memoir. Uh, there's spying, um, there's a transgender reassignment before the, in the thirties, before this ever really existed. Uh, just a lot of, of really interesting, interesting things that are, that is going to be found in here. I can tell. Uh, so really excited to get that and very excited to start my subscription and I'll link below to the podcast because it really Oh, it's it, especially if you're anxious and and things aren't going well. You just pop that podcast on, and you just feel better immediately. Um, all right, and then I went and enjoyed uh, the Independent Bookstore Day. So let me show you some of my my goodies. So I had to grab um, the Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's um, little cute bag. We should all be feminists, so I wanted that, of course grabbed the women talking that signed um, a little and which is perfect perfect timing and this was a red cover i don't i think the regular edition was just a gray cover but for independent bookstore day they they did a red cover and she signed it and it's perfect timing because i literally ran out on my on my library hold and so they yanked it back and so i need to finish it very very close to finishing um, and then I also got this. I heard this was this a lot of good things for this. How to do nothing, uh, resisting the attention economy, and this was uh, signed by the author. I got this at um, one of my favorites, East Bay Booksellers. Thrilled with that. They also had uh, this book uh, that they had previewed or or um, featured in their Instagram that looked just delightful, just like a meditation on walking. Really beautiful images and a uh, little journal here. And this is by uh, Erling Keg. So what I'm going to be releasing back into the world uh, are the following. Uh, so I'm going to send back We Were Orphans. Now I love, love Ishiguru, but this wasn't really one of my most favorites. Um, it's it, This is kind of, uh, I think he has this set up as a as a mystery and, and it just didn't work for me. And I'd rather keep shelf space for the Ishigurus that I love dearly, like the Berry Giant and uh, Remains of the Day. Uh, um, then even though this is a first edition of Rachel Cusk's outline, who and I love this one very much, I don't, I hate the American cover. Uh, and Picador just released the trilogy with the UK covers, which are so much better. So I'm going to hand this one back. Uh, and then I think this is a good swap. So with the other chunkster, I'm going to give back this chunkster. So I'm going to sell back um, in pairs, uh, the instance of the finger post. This was a fantastic book that I read for a class that I take that I took in Oxford. So I try to I try to study at Oxford once a year for a week and I stay at Christ Church and for one of the classes was a study about um, crime, crime, the crime novel set in Oxford and so this was this was one this is a historical fiction set in 1663 in England and it is really I highly recommend it hard hard book um, but perfect uh, to read with a with a very uh, fancy book club, like uh, like going to Oxford and taking a class. So I really enjoyed reading that with everyone and talking about it. Then I'm gonna give this back. So I got this, uh, I think I found this at a sale, uh, The Keeper of Lost Causes. Uh, this is the first of the Department Q novel. Here's the thing, I think this is just kind of quirky and I've just never really, I'm not, I'm, very rarely do I like a quirky book. You know, I'm not a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy kind of gal. Uh, I think this is along those lines, and so I've never been in the right mood to pick it up. So it's just sitting there. Um, so I'm gonna release it back to the 
back to the, the bookstore, used bookstore people. And then the last, oh, this one was such a disappointment. Um, it's not bad, I just didn't connect with it. And that's a female persuasion. I love the idea, I love the premise, but I just couldn't get on with it. So I'm gonna send it back, bummer. So that's it, that's all of my takes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.